Hello, this is Cynthia. Uh, another test this morning. I've tried a couple of times to actually send out a Facebook Live, and uh, unfortunately, there are some struggles going on with Facebook right now. People getting booed off and all kinds of things going on. So I've actually went into my software, uh, Zoom, not that that really matters to anybody, but we're, this is another test. I, it's important that I connect today because I have a couple of things that I want to say. Um, first of all, um, I hope you're all doing fine, that you're practicing social distancing, you are following the laws and the suggestions and the guidelines that our president and our state rulers have and for, are enforcing for us or our, our guidelines that they're suggesting that we follow. I believe that God, the, the Bible tells us that all authorities are set in place by him. Uh, that's the Cynthia version. And that we need to follow those guidelines up until the point they cross God's word. And right now, this is not crossing God's word. We can still gather together. We can still connect via uh, electronically. So if you notice, I'm keeping my head down. If you go like this, you can see my lights for my camera. So I apologize for that. So I'm going to try to remember to do that today. But what I wanted to share with you is I am a big uh, news person. I uh, follow the news, I read the news, I get the newspaper, I do those sorts of things. And I wanted to share with you um, an, an article. This is the Pensacola News Journal. It came out yesterday, Sunday. Um, and there's a, a guest uh, author, hopefully this isn't glaring for you, and I'll just tell you about this article. There's a guest columnist, uh, Quint, Q-U-I-N-T, Studer, S-T-U-D-E-R, and the, the title of his article is How Businesses Can Use Time to Sharpen Their Saw. And I read this yesterday. Yesterday, Dean and I spent some time going over some prophetic things, some leaders that we follow, listening and um, really thinking about what is God doing in the earth today? You know, because God is not surprised. He's not sitting on his throne chewing his nails. He's not concerned about the coronavirus. He is not concerned about what we will look like in the world um, after this shall pass, because this too shall pass. But what he is doing is I believe that, I also believe that God is speaking all the time. And so we as Christians should be asking God, what are you saying in this time? And I believe um, the prophetic voices that I follow um, and also those that uh, it witnesses in my spirit, it makes total sense to me that um, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, three of the big voices that I follow are Chuck Pierce, uh, Cindy Jacobs, um, James Gall, there's some other ones that I also follow. Um, there's some ministries I follow, Derek Prince ministry, of course, Derek Prince has passed on, but I still follow his teachings a lot. I, I research from him, I trust him. Uh, he's gone on to be with the Lord. Um, I also follow and listen to Dutch Sheets. He's an apostle over the United States of America. So anything that happens in the United States, I always want to hear what he has to say and what he's believing God. And he's at home. I believe that he's just had some surgery. I'm not sure what the particulars are with that. But I want to talk out back up a little bit. And I'll be talking about this newspaper in just a minute, bringing those two pieces together uh, for us. So as we began to, I read my, my newspaper yesterday, as we began to dive into the voices that have come out this week with words, and we had some time to sit down and digest those yesterday in the evening, afternoon and evening, I heard, um, and I actually heard this, this prophetic word at the head of the year, which the, the Hebraic calendar is different than our calendar. We have a Gregorian calendar, uh, our months run different, than the Hebraic calendar. And so Chuck Pierce and Glory of Zion Ministries follows the Hebraic year. We, we, um, we celebrate uh, new moon uh, festivals, the, the, the changing of the month over, because each month has a new prophetic meeting. We follow the calendar, we celebrate Passover, we celebrate uh, the end of the year or ahead of the year, the beginning of the new year in the fall. And, uh, uh, Chuck Pierce at the beginning of the year, which would have been probably August, September-ish, he got a word about tighten your belt. And um, he wondered what that was about. And I remember the word. I remember that that was something that was going to permeate throughout uh, 2020, our, our calendar year, as well as the Hebraic year. 
And then he got a word about pulling aside himself because he was going to have to do some writing, the, the Lord said, and he was going to have, I think it was three months. Don't quote me on that. Um, but he was wondering how was he going to do this because he travels the world. And so now he looks back and it makes total sense. So his ministry had girded up their belts or tightened their belts and girded themselves up for in advance. You know, God is not surprised about what's going to happen in the future. You know, I think it's wise just as the sons of Issachar, they knew the signs of the times. And so it's wise of us to study and to pay attention to what the calendar is saying, what the what God is doing, and what those uh, in the ministry that we trust are saying. So in this time, one of the other words that uh, as this uh, virus began to take form in all over the world, he began to ask the Lord about it. And he felt like the Lord was saying that he has pulled the world aside for Shabbat, which would be equivalent to our Sabbath. It's a time when you pull away, we in the United States, the Western world, we don't practice the, uh, the Sabbath the way that we should. We don't take that day of rest and honor to God, uh, to honor who he is. And, you know, that is one of the Ten Commandments, and we don't do that well. So God has forced the world into a time of Shabbat or a time of Sabbath. And so we're forced to be at home. Things have slowed down. Uh, those of us who are working from home, which, thank the Lord, I am uh, one of those who, who is allowed to work from home. Um, uh, those of us who are even working at home, everything is slowed down. The way that we operate slows down. The communication slows down. Everything is slowed down. So um, when, if we consider that that's what God is doing in, the t in this day and hour and in this season, that we should take advantage of that Shabbat or that Sabbath, the, the Sabbath time. And so that's where this newspaper came in. I thought it was really interesting. The title of the article is How Businesses Can Use Time to Sharpen Their Saw. And uh, I don't know anything about this gentleman uh, other than I do want to point out some of the tips that he gives uh, in his newspaper article that we should be doing during this time. And he's speaking specifically to businesses, but one of his first tips is to tend to relationships. And, you know, I, uh, most of you know, I have four daughters. Dean has two sons. Dean's been in contact with our sons. I've been in contact with our daughters. And actually having a lot more contact with them than I normally do in a course of a day. They, everybody works. And so we're, we, we, I call it the sisters text. All of my daughters text one another. And uh, they, you can imagine four girls talking to each other all day long. So we have that going on. So I know more about what's happening in their lives on a moment, moment basis than I have. Uh, since they lived at home, I think, or unless we were planning some big event for the family. So I've been in contact with my family. I've been in contact with my mother. I've been in contact with my stepmother. I've been in contact with um, family, extended family on a, on a whole. I've been in contact with my children. And I am in contact with those that Dean and I are privileged to minister to or with alongside our senior pastor, we're associate pastors at Courts of Praise Fellowship here in Pensacola, Florida. So I'm reaching out to those as well and offering prayer, support, and encouragement on an extra basis, technology-wise, more so than I would if I would see them once or twice a week in services. So I think time, a Shabbat time or a Sabbath time is a time to pull away, to, um, to tend to our relationships, and most of all, to tend to our relationship with God. You know, there, most of us will say, I'm too busy to pray. I'm too busy to read the word. I can't get much out of it. I don't know how to pray. This is a great time to, uh, to go after prayer, to learn to pray. There's lots of resources out there to go after getting into the word. There's lots and lots and lots of resources out there. If there's a specific topic that you want to know about, spend some time going after God and going after the word to find out what God has to say about that topic. Now, I'm going to pull a plug here um, as well. I've been teaching Sunday mornings at our local fellowship, um, about 15 minutes, sometimes a half hour, depending, uh, a short time about prayer. And then we do lab. We actually pray after that until our services begin. Also, um, running um, something called prayer school. And I want to invite you, for those of you who would like to learn to pray, you can join me in prayer school. So take the time to connect and foster relationship during this 
Shabbat or Sabbath time. Secondly, in his article, he goes on to say connecting with employees. He says to connect with um, people that you're in business with. So obviously, he's coming from the aspect of a business. But, you know, we as uh, Christians belong to fellowship. I hate to use the word church because we're the church, right? This is also, think about this. This, um, what's happening in the world today is causing us to evaluate how we do church, how we do what we do. Are we really being effective in today's day and age? So this is a time when we can stop and say, okay, God, what are you saying? Uh, going to a building with four walls isn't necessarily it anymore. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like on the other side. That's why I'm saying we need to begin to apply ourselves and evaluate how productive our services are. What is it that God's saying? I believe God's wanting to bring a great harvest in the earth today. One of the reasons that we should be in our Sabbath rest is to rest and prepare ourselves for the great harvest. Secondly, I think that we need to evaluate where we are in our families and our own personal relationships, how we intercommunicate amongst ourselves, how our churches or our fellowship function in the world today. I think it's important also, he, one of the, the tips he also says is to do an audit of your company. I think it's a great time for us as Christians to do an audit of our relationship, to do an audit of our relationship with God, to do an audit of our fellowship and its ability to be relevant in the earth today. Now, the gospel message doesn't change. How we present the gospel may change, but the gospel message itself does not change. So I'm not suggesting that we become um, uh, seeker sensitive, that we, 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 we disregard sin, or that we become uh, end time uh, prophets per se, uh, even though my husband is, is one who teaches on end time. But we are ones who pr promote the gospel. We pr promote the kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand and all that entails. So do an audit of your own life. Do an audit of your prayer life. Do an audit of your relationship with the Lord. Do an audit of your relationship with your immediate family, those that are within your household. Do an audit of those in which you are in contact with in your local fellowship. Do an audit. I think that was great advice here in this article. I think also, and I think the reason why it's so resounded with me yesterday is because all the different sources that I was looking at, I, I don't go to, to the news or, or the newspaper for my spiritual, uh, but I do believe that when we're looking for God, when we're looking for a word, when we're, we're looking for truth, when we're looking for what he's saying to us, that we can see it all around us. If we can just, if we just ask God to show us, that he will show us. And so I believe that that's what this was, is a confirmation for me. That out of all of the articles in the newspaper, this is the one that stuck out to me yesterday. And as I began to look through and we began to listen to the podcast that Dutch Seeps did with Chuck Pierce last week, we began to watch uh, uh, different programs that we, that we prescribe to. Um, Gloria Zion's uh, response, uh, Chuck Pierce's teaching on where his prophetic teaching yesterday, and then also the Gloria Zion service with Robert Heidler, who is a great, a great teacher. I, I, I would always encourage you to check that, that man and that ministry out. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous ministries to help us coordinate today and the Hebraic system and what God is saying prophetically on the earth today. But this article goes on to say, um, talk about making your meetings really count. Talk about giving yourself in your workplace and your home a, a facelift. You know, my, one of my daughters mentioned that she's making a list to do some deep cleaning. And I have always equated deep cleaning in my home uh, to my spiritual life as well. I think it's important that we do deep cleaning in our own lives so that when we're ready to go back out, we've revamped ourselves. We've reconnected with the Lord. We've, re, we've rededicated ourselves and we have also uh, cleaned out some of the places that maybe we haven't taken the time uh, to research and get into the corners and the nooks and crannies of our lives and our homes to make sure that everything is clean and ready to go. So um, the, last, uh, the last point that this gentleman makes in his article, and I wanted to for sure speak to it as well. And I loved it. He must be a hockey person. I'm not a hockey person per se. But he says, 
His last point uh, is figure out where the puck, P-U-C-K, is going. Figure out where the puck is going. And I think that's so apropos for us today. You know, we need to turn aside. We need to take that Sabbath. We need to take that Sabbath. We need to take the time to make sure everything is right with God. You know, I talk about when we have our relationship with him right, everything on relational level works out. So as we do that, we can also say, God, what are you saying? And where are you going? Where is the puck going? Where are you going, God? What are you saying to us? What is this going to look like on the other side? What do you want me to be prepared for other than my, me being rested in my body, being um, uh, a resurgence of connection in my, my uh, immediate family and those that I fellowship with? What else are you saying, God? What is it that you want to do? What do you want this to look like on the other side? I think, as I, I think I've already mentioned before, that when we're asking God to show us what he's doing, he will. He's a good father. Doesn't the scripture say that um, if uh, a child asks for, um, I think it's bread, will he give him a stone? It will, you know, will the Lord give him a, or the father give a stone? Well, our father is good. And when we ask him what is going on, he'll tell us. The scripture also tells us that if we lack, if we lack wisdom, we can ask and he will give it. Also, it talks about, and I've mentioned this before, the sons of Issachar, they knew the times and the seasons. If we as Christians don't know the times and the seasons, um, something's wrong, folks, because we are the ones that should be the rulers, the managers of the, king, the, the earth realms. We need to step up and take our place in the earth today and begin to rule the way that God established us to do. So I was real encouraged. Um, I, I, I know a lot of people are frustrated. A lot of people are, I'm gonna take this off so I can uh, lean back and not worry about the glare. I know a lot of you all are uh, concerned. Uh, I know that some may be even a bit frightened. Um, some may even be uh, bewildered as to, uh, you know, one of the, my pet peeves is when anything bad happens, people say, well, why would God let this happen? We always assume the bad things are God, and I don't know why I don't, because uh, God is a good father. But in the midst of horrible times, scary times, fearful times for the world, we can be at peace. We can be in our Sabbath. We can be at rest. We can be about our father's business, preparing to come out on the other side. You know, God has always had a people that, could, that has been able to prosper, prosper in the midst of chaos. And we can prosper if we'll only set our hearts to do so. You know, God did have a widow who um, never ran out of oil, right? We, we have lots of instances where Jesus took uh, fish and bread and fed multitudes. God is a miracle. The same God that was miracle, did those miracles then is the same God that we serve today. We need to be more in tune with what he's doing, what he's saying, and his provision than we are looking for uh, what the government, what our our paychecks will say as a, as far as provision. So I just want to encourage you today to take that time aside, to to take the time to have a Sabbath, to have the time to seek the Lord. Make time, make time in the slowed down time. Don't waste your time. Make that time to reconnect with Him, to reconnect in a deeper way to connect yourself in his word, to connect yourself in prayer, to connect yourself with immediate family, to connect yourself with those that you're in fellowship with in your local body, to connect yourself, to ask God to show us how can we be more effective in the earth today? What is it on the other side of this rest he would have for us? I'm excited. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm really excited. And so I just wanted to share that message with you this morning through all the technical difficulties that's going on in the world today, not being able to get cameras, not getting to get uh, feeds that'll stay stable for long enough to record a video, whatever. I, I thought it was important this morning, even the light, poor lighting and all the different things that are going on with cameras and lights and getting reflections and glasses and all that sort of thing. I think it was important and it is important to know what God is saying. So I'm asking you to ask the Lord for yourself. You know, we don't just swallow hook, line and sinker what someone else says. We, we have those who we trust. 
If you don't know me, if you don't trust me, okay, ask the Lord. And if you do know me and you do trust me, still ask the Lord because you don't want a word from me, you want a word from God. And so I'm telling you today or instructing you today, if you know me at all and you know that you've ever gotten a word that was in due season in the past, that you need to connect with him and you need to connect on a deeper level so that you'll be ready for when we come out on the other side. Go ahead and ask him, where is he going? What's he doing? What does he want you to do during this Sabbath time? God bless you, and I'll see you next time.